Hey, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm interviewing today uh, Callan Chalk, and we wanted to talk about uh, art for indie game design and you know anything un unincorporated. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and <laughs> so I just wanted to talk. You're working on um, this game project called Liege, correct? Yes, uh, I am the 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 one man army, the guy that does all the art. I'm just the art guy. Awesome. So, how long have you been involved with this project? Um, let's see. I would say it's been about two years now. Um, it's, it's I can't believe I can even say that. It's it's so long. But yeah, I wow. think it's been about going two years strong. I think he hit me up. Um, in or actually no, I think it's been. I think it's been a year and a half now. I would imagine mm -hmm. a year and a half, and I think we're we're slowly getting on the two years. So, um, yeah, probably probably a year and a half to, to two years. It's been a long time. And is it just uh, you and your in your partner kind of working on this? Yeah, it's just, just the two uh, of you? me and his name. His name is John John Ree. Um, mm -hmm. It's just me and John. Uh, we have a, a guy named Akash, who's mm -hmm. like this prodigy uh, um, music guy. He does all the sound. He's like oh. this like sixteen year old kid in Pleasanton, like, <laughs> not far from um, from us, uh, not from me in the Bay Area, and that that's it. Um, it's just literally. I mean, John. I mean, um, Akash doesn't do as much. I mean, he has to kind of wait. All of his work is kind of on the back end. Yeah, all it's done because he kind of has to make the music for the game. But for the most part, it's it's just more so like a two man team, and then the third man kind of comes in through the ringer, comes in at the end, and kind of handles everything. So um, total total uh, three. That is, yeah, that's 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 amazing in itself, and it never hurts to have a prodigy. <laughs> Yeah, Especially. it's crazy. Like, like when he told me how old he was, like he's like he's like sixteen. I was like, what? And apparently, he he came to the Bay Area to meet John at one point in time. But I was busy. I had like some girlfriend stuff to do, and I was like, that's weird. Like, we can't we can't like go out, we can't go drinking. <laughs> like, right. and like his like and because like he never met John before. I think like his parents had to come and like make sure like we weren't like some like child molesters or some shit <laughs> like it was like because he's never met him before but he's been paying him money mm -hmm. and stuff and he's like dad can i go to san francisco which is like an hour away from where he lives like can i go to the city to meet this guy that's paying me money and his dad i think his parents are like uh i don't know about that bro how about i go with you first <laughs> and then you know i'll drop you off so is that you've worked on a, a lot of different types of projects and for all types uh, all types of companies and stuff right you've done for, work for ilm and <laughs> Yeah. yeah, why don't you just give us a brief overview of some of the things you worked on, and then you know I'd love to just um, contrast that, and saying like, is this really is this where your kind of passion lies, working on you know this type of project, or you know? Um, yeah, so I mean, I've I've been lucky enough to have a pretty like versatile career. Um, you know, when I first started working in games, uh, I worked for a small company called Crazy Pixel, <laughs> and and that was always kind of hilarious because we were a third party company. So that meant that we just had to take on work that was given to us. So we would we would help studios with their projects, and and, and some of the first things I ever got was um, a Diner Dash game <laughs> for, for like forty year old women. That was like my first job I ever got. Was like I got I got hired at the studio, and they were like, "All right, we need you to work on this Diner Dash game." And it's called a uh, it's called a uh, passport to perfume. I bet you if I look it up, I can I can actually find it. I'll bring it. I'll br actually bring it on my other screen. Passport to perfume. Awesome. And it's like it's like it's like the the dark secret of my childhood that when my students are like, oh, you have to work on the cool stuff, and I'm like, dude, you it's don't not know always that way. It's, I'm like. You guys gotta know. I had I paid my dues. Like right, look at that. Like, good, like six months, I was doing this stuff, and it was just like, oh man. Like I had I had to make this table. I had to design out the bottles, <laughs> like all this stuff. I had to um, help design, you know, like the the uh, the the, um, the title screen, like all this stuff. And it was just it was like the graphics are so boss though. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily we had some we had some three D modelers, but I had to like come up with all the concepts. And yeah. for like six months, like I literally this this was my life, and it was funny because I would go back to school. And they'd be like, oh, Kalen, what's it like to work in the industry, you know? <laughs> like, um, it's cool. Not like, what I, I was expecting. What I'm working on, but, you know, so. That, that's, that, that was me for, for a good while. And um, and then luckily I upgraded. I, I actually got to move, got to, move to Spain mm -hmm. um, after, that, after that company. And then I worked on some of their, uh, it's called Pirates uh, Treasure Hunters. It's like a Korean MMO. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Um, or no Korean? Uh, what do you call Dota? What, what what are those Dota things called? The like oh. Dota, the Legends. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I have no idea. I've actually never played one of them, but I know what you're talking about. They're called uh, MOBAs. MOBAs. Yeah, MOBAs. MOBAs. Yeah, so I I worked on like a a Korean like MOBA. And then um, after that, I I moved back to the United States. And then I um, went to Comic-Con. And that's where I met the creative director for ILM. And I just happened to have my portfolio like on my iPad that day. And he saw it, he liked it. And then within three weeks later, he just offered me a job to to come out and help out. That's awesome. for, for six months or about six, seven months on some of their projects like Star Trek. and So did you work kind of on site with that or still kind of remotely? Yeah, I was on site. So I had to move from SoCal. Um, like they, they literally called me and they were like, can you come like next month? And I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> so I had to find an apartment. And then luckily there was a guy that was working there already um, that was a staff artist there. And oh, awesome. he knew one of my friends, and he needed a roommate. His name was Tang Lee. You can look him up. He's an amazing artist from Battle Milk, if you've ever seen that that book series. Um, yeah, well, definitely. Yeah, really, really good guy. And he's just like, hey, do you need a roommate? Because I need a roommate. And I'm like, cool. So then I, I he already had an apartment lined up, so I didn't have to do anything. So I just put everything in my Corolla and then just drove um, you know, about six, six eight hours to uh, to NorCal. And then I helped. I got to work on some really cool projects. Like you know, I got to touch a little bit of some Star Wars stuff when that when that first came out. Oh, awesome. um, like little little things like that. I got to mostly as mostly as kind of like art assisting. I wasn't getting any any like the big shots or anything like that. But I got to help out on like some some Star Trek stuff, some Jurassic Park stuff, um, and some other other bid work projects. And after that, really right, cool. Of course, um, yeah. And then I began teaching a little bit, and then um, that's when John hit me up. You know, shortly after my time at ILM, and was like, "Hey, uh, I really like your work. I have this project. Uh, would you want to be a part of it?" And then I saw it, and I was like, "All right, cool. Let's let's do it." And that's kind of the rest is history. Yeah, really, really awesome. And that's that's exactly how I got my start too. I did like those hidden object games for two years straight, and <laughs> that that's the first gig I got like <laughs> six months out. And yeah, that, those get. Those are a grind. Like there's those are rough. I, I hear you. There's I'm, really nothing enjoyable about that. But you know, it's about building that. Like it really motivated me in my off time to really work on my own personal concepts and stuff that that are just you know kind of like the stuff we do today, like cool epic paintings and environments. And then you know, with, with the motivation there, you can start getting the bigger jobs and when you're working on that. And so I think a very similar path to you, in terms of that. And yeah, I, I, was, I was I was very lucky. Um, uh, to, to be contacted by John, like during that Mm -hmm. time, like I was, I was looking for some work and, um, and luckily I was kind of committed to stay because I I had been with my girlfriend at that time for probably about a year and I didn't want to leave, um, uh, NorCal if I didn't have to. And luckily I I got a teaching gig and that was really cool. And I I still teach there now. Do you teach at like a university or? Yeah, I teach at the place called the Art Institute of Silicon Valley. Oh, cool! And and they're they're um, they're they're kind of a new school, so it's a little bit it's it can be a little bit rough sometimes. But luckily, my boss is like one of the chillest bosses ever. She she gives me like free range because she trusts me. So she's kind of like, you know, if you want to yell at students, if you got to do what you got to do, like I'm cool with that as, as long as they come out better. You know, mm-hmm. it's pretty much like her her staple is like as long as they as long as it makes them better, then you got to do what you got to do. Like I want to just get better. So um, it's very nice to have that kind of like freedom to kind of do what I want with the students. Yeah, if I, it's gonna help them. So it's, yeah, so I, t- I teach with them, and then and then yeah, John hit me up, and uh, usually uh, usually I always say no to Kickstarter projects, uh, right? <laughs> it's because it's always this. Hey, do you all this work for me? And we might hire you when we get money. And I'm like, okay. yeah, that I get that a lot as well. You know, in theory, that that makes no sense, right? Like, mm-hmm. why would I why would I do all this work for you to to maybe get hired if you guys get funded, which is was isn't even a guarantee. Um, but the cool thing about John is that he had already got funded, and um, and I saw his project, and what what made me like really impressed was how much work he had already done, like yeah. just by himself. And so, to me, that that was an that was a sign of respect because it, it to me it, it it was very clear that this product was going to happen regardless of whether I wanted to be a part of it or not. So it was kind of like it was very <laughs> like if you want to be a part of it, cool. Um, if not, like I'm already I'm already heading there. So like you can you can you can be a part of it or not be a part of it. And and seeing how much he had got done for someone that had no game experience at all, um, 
you know, someone that he worked in finance, you know, for a long time, you know, and had yeah. some programming experience. I mean, he has no game experience and, and how much he got done writing his own script, doing the, doing the, doing his own art. I was like, all right, I think if, if we combined, we could make something really cool here. So, um, and that's where, and that's where we've been. It's been, it's been really, really great. It's been really fun thus far. How long have, uh, how long, do you know how long he was working on this before he, uh, kind of signed you up? So he he did it. Um, he was he was doing it for about two years, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, on and off. Already having a full time job and already making like really good money um, at at his job. Yeah. In his in his finance thing, you know. But I guess he didn't like it. You know what I mean? From from what I understand is yeah. that yeah he made a lot of money and yeah he was very comfortable, but it was boring to him. You know. Yeah. And so eventually he was just like, well, every day after work, I'm just gonna grind on this game, make a script, do the art, do the animations do all this stuff and then I'm just going to release it. And then I guess it kind of just caught wind that this one guy, <laughs> that old game experience is like making a game and it looks pretty damn good. They're like, Holy shit. Yeah. So then they're like, dude, you should, you should get this funded, you know? And so he was like, all right. So he put, he put out a Kickstarter and then <laughs> obviously, you know, the rest of the deal, right. He yep. only asked for like 15,000. He got like 81,000. And so that's when it, it was like, Oh crap. Like this might actually be something you know, worth investing in. So then, you know, shortly after he kind of quit, he just quit his job and even his job wanted him to stay. They were like, well, can you stay part-time? You know, like oh. really, we, 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 we really want you or like, do you want, do you want more money? Like, what do you want? You know? And he's just like, nothing. Like I, I want to go do this. Like there's not much you guys can offer me that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's when like, he just kind of, he just, yeah, he, he quit. And then, he found me because I was doing – I did a Final Fantasy painting not too long ago and he was just like, hey, man, like I saw your Final Fantasy, your Final Fantasy Tactics painting and I really liked it. And so I, I can tell that you're in these kind of games. I'm making a game similar to that. Just check it out. you know. And if you're interested, like I, I'd want you to be the person that does the art for my game. And and I, I saw the game and I was like, wow, this is like freaking really, really Would impressive. It? Pardon me. Would it take you uh, long to show that that image up on screen to your tactics one? I, I don't think um, I've seen yeah, it. I'm just uh, you sparked yeah, my I, curiosity I, now. <laughs> uh, uh, it was just like a joke painting. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't even finish it. But it was. It's just funny because I, uh, I was like, what if, what if I drew like a Final Fantasy tactics like person like today? Um, Final Fantasy. That, that's one of my favorite um, games in that whole series. Is that one, and it's and that's yeah, why I like so, drew me like into interested in Legion stuff because like I can't wait to play this game. Yeah, that's that's exactly how it was because when I saw this game, I was like, dude, I love tactics. You know, I have right? that game on my Vita. I have it. I, I have the PS One. I still have the original PS One CD. Yep. Um, you know, like it's just one of my favorite games of all time, and I, I can play that game over and over again. So when I heard so he good. was like. When he, when he was uh, doing that, I was like, dude, I'm totally on board. I get to make my own. Because I've, I've been waiting for so long for them to make, like, a version of that. Right. And it's just been – it just hasn't come through. Oh, yeah, so that dude. I, I drew a picture of the chemist. <laughs> I did see that before. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I was like, what if what if there was a chemist but he was, like, in real life, you know? So he's got the, the big bag – like, the big the big bag full of his, like – Potions you know, and Potions. Got remedies. A knife. They, they would have a knife, right? And, yep. Or they have a gun. And so, like, I was going to do a bunch of these, but I guess he saw that and, you know, was just like, well, cool. Well, if I'm going to hire an artist, I'd rather hire an artist that's that's into what we're doing. And so, yeah, I got very lucky because he, he offered he offered me the work and um, was going to pay me a certain amount. And then what, what ended up happening was that he ended up moving out to, to NorCal to work with me directly. So for a good, you know, eight months, we were just working out of my apartment. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he he got a small apartment nearby that was wasn't even like his own apartment. It was like a kind of like a hostel apartment kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like you just rent a room and with other people. So I mean, every day I would just go and pick him up um, from this from this house down the street, and then we would just work and we would just work in my um, we would just work in my uh, in my in my in my room, like in my in my apartment, you know. Because the Tang, you know, he's at ILM still because he's a staff artist. He's he's there every day, so he's gone. And then he would come, come over in the living room. So we had like a, a two desk setup, and we would just work almost every other day. If I if, if I wasn't teaching, then I'd be there. Mm -hmm. And then on the weekends, he would just be working anyway. So, so yeah, that's pretty much how we've been working thus far. But eventually, he he um, he worked for he started he went, he went back home to Korea, 
because he's kind of running out of money, I believe. And then so he he worked, started working at um, went back to Korea to see his family, see mm-hmm. his mom and um, his parents because they live in Korea. And then he worked there for a while, and now he's back at home. He's back in the back on the East Coast at one of his parents' house. Um, just chilling. So we pretty much work remotely right now. And we kind of just talk every once in a while um, on Gmail and just kind of keep in touch. And he's like, hey, I need you to fix this. Or, hey, we're trying to get this done before this date. You think it can happen? And um, luckily now we, we, we're we on a very we, – we know each other very, very well. So we know, like, I know I know what needs to get done. He know what needs to get done. So we, yeah. don't, we don't even talk about Jack Spear. It's just, like, we just work when we can and we just – we connect every like you know month or every couple of weeks or so. How far along do you think is the overall uh, project coming? Uh, it's it's pretty far along. We actually released some beta keys recently mm-hmm. for the people that were a part of the Kickstarter. Um, and I, I've I've played it a little bit. I haven't had time to really kind of break into it. Um, just mostly because I'm just like I don't want to play. It. I want to like get the art done. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, we released some beta keys. We're we're aiming for something early next year. Uh, awesome. Maybe in like April, May, like so May of next year would be would be like the best time. Target date, and yeah. we're we're aiming to try to maybe possibly get at some um, some uh, like shows, you know, like yeah. packs, all that kind of stuff. That would definitely help. That, that would that would help to kind of spread the name a little bit. And um, but I, I'm not we're not really too worried about the whole um, marketing aspect of it. Yeah. I think when the time comes. Um, it will be fine. Like we'll we'll have what we need to like to mark this people. But mm-hmm. for the meantime, it's just make sure getting it done. This the bug fixes, you know. Because yeah. again, I'm the, I'm the only artist. He's the only programmer, so it's just like it's just crazy um, how much work that needs to get done. Yeah, absolutely. It's a tremendous amount to take on, but you know, good. I think uh, you know, good. If the you know the your game is good and everything, like I think through word of mouth, you know, a lot of people will be interested in playing this. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what we're we're kind of aiming for, you know. Um, it, it, it's taken me a long time to do a lot of the artwork, and, and even John will will jokingly kind of get on me about it. And he's <laughs> like, hey, man, why don't you just like photo bash it, you know? And um, and it, and it's a very valid reason too. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of those things where it's um, you know, after working in like film and games, that's all you do um, now. Right. You just you just photo bash, you know, just to get stuff done. And and granted that there's nothing wrong with that, you know, it's just supply and demand. No, you know? yeah. People, people want stuff, they want it now, they want it real. And it's just there's just no way you could do it without really doing that or incorporating three D. But for the first time in a while, um, it's felt like this is like my baby or some stuff it, it feels like it's mine. And so I'm kinda like, well, if I'm gonna do it, like I wanna do it my way. Like I wanna paint everything. Because I feel like today we, everything is rushed, you know? You yeah, I think, and I think what you're doing here with this is definitely something a lot of people, you know, take for granted. Like it, this is truly like a labor of love and it shows that. And that, that's what me- immediately sparked my interest in this too, is you, you have that same passion for if you're working on something that's not for a production pipeline, like you like to get in there and kind of handcraft it. Yeah, I, I think... I think the way art has gone is is really weird because we're we're all about like speed, yeah, and we're all about like produce something like every week, produce something like every hour, you know, or every day. And if we don't, and they're kind of like, hey, where have you been? You haven't, you haven't been producing stuff, you know. And I feel like there shouldn't be anything wrong with taking your time. I, I, I think, think that's definitely about, an oversight. I can't even stress that enough. How how much I see that as well. Yeah, like it's. I I feel like nowadays it's just like. I could do this in an hour, you know, like I can do this in 30 minutes. And it's like, well, what, what's wrong with taking six hours? What's wrong with taking four hours? Exactly. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like you're kind of missing the fun part, which is the journey of it. You know, like, I feel like we're like, art is fun to me. So why would I want to, why would I want to rush through the fun part, which is painting. And so, um, I've, I've really, John's been really, 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 really respectful of me and, and let me kind of like take my time on things. Because I'm like, hey man, like if it's gonna, if we're gonna do this, if it's gonna be our own game, like, and I'm kind of like speaking from my own experience, like I want to do it the way I want to do it, like, yeah. which is like, a, a lot of people that alone is is worth like working out of my own pocket, just that freedom, you know. I I, I have a lot of friends that work at AAA studios mm-hmm. that work on big names, and they always tell me how lucky I am. They're like, dude, that's so cool, you get to do right. what you want to do, and I'm like, dude, but you make a lot of money. That's really cool. He's like, yeah, but. <laughs> He's like, I'm kind of like a slave, you know, they could fire me at any moment and whatever, but at least you're like doing what you want to do. And like, you have your own, you have your own like freedom, you know, just to, 
to enjoy the enjoy like the passion of it and that's one thing that i'm really glad that this project gave back to me was just you know for a while i just felt like a little bit kind of burnt out from all that stuff like doing the same shit over and oh over. yeah and I, I really felt i really feel like john uh i'm always thankful for him for giving something that's like i can be passionate about again that like whenever i get tired working on leads i'm just like dude why, why are you getting tired for like this is like this is cool, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I look at all these indie games out there, and I'm like, oh, man, like, I want our game to be that game. And so, and I, I think it really can be, you know? I haven't I haven't really believed in the project in a very long time, and I, I really think that this game can be something really special for people um, to bring back that old, you know, RPG, you know, feel that we that we don't, we don't see very often. That, that golden era of 90s RPGs. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, just like, I, I think everything exactly. is, everything has to be in 3D. Everything has to be hyper-realistic. It has to be like, you know, and I'm just like, where are those like colorful Damn. games? You know, know, those games that got me inspired to dream and, and think about things as a kid. And I guess that's me just getting older, I guess, being becoming an old man, I guess. But yep. like, I want to, I want to at least reach that one person that, 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 that wants that kind of game, you know? You reach me, guys. You reach me. I'm all about yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know, 27, I, I feel like an old guy. I feel like I'm coming, like, cynical and just, like, I'm like, back in my day, like, you know, we used to play games and they were, like, cool, you know? And it's just, it's, it's again, like, one, one of the things I have, a, I have a really good respect for John is just that he, uh, you know, he he's a perfectionist, you know? He wants things done right mm. and, he won't release something if he thinks it's not good, you know? And and in today's society, especially with games, people are just so quick to release things. They're just like, I know, hey, they're like we'll patch it later. later. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we'll, we'll patch it later, you know what I mean? And, and John doesn't want to do that, you know? So he, he, he works, you know, day and night um, tirelessly on this game. And, and the cool thing about that is that people see it and they respect him for it. You know, the game industry can be really mean, as you know. Yeah. If people don't like something, they'll, they'll let you know. <laughs> they're not afraid to voice their opinion. Yeah, there have been a couple of times where we've, we've been late on stuff, you know, for like deliverables, I guess, for the where we say like, hey, we're going to have this done by this time. Yep. And, we're, and we're get, we get kind of afraid, like, man, what if people get mad at Kickstarter, you know? But, you know, people have been really supportive. They're just like, you know, John will just be like, hey, man, like it's been taking a lot longer than I thought. Uh, I didn't know this was going to happen, but like we're doing this, 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 and this. And I really want to make it like special for you guys. And everyone's like, all right, cool, man. Like, just take your time, man. Like, we're not like, we just want you to make it right. We want you to make it what you want it to be. And that just shows how, how cool the fans are and how much they respect um the work that two guys are kind of putting in you now they're not <laughs> right. being like well screw you i want this shit done by next year or i'm gonna like be really be a dick and i'm like so I've, I've been very very lucky thus far that people have been so supportive and just like we just want you to make it and then we'll we'll be here when it's ready and that, yeah and that's that's what's really important because i you hear that about those types of stories uh more like more often and like all the time now, like people are leaving their, the safety of their AAA jobs because they want to start, you know, their own smaller studios where they can work on their own passion projects and stuff because they, they just, you know, for whatever reason it is, even if they're financially really stable there, but that they want to get back to what they're really passionate about that you kind of <laughs> lose in that corporate environment. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, it, it kind of boggles me a little bit. I'm like, dude, why would you want to leave like six? Yeah, I, and I say that too, but then it's like, it's I don't know. I guess it's always on the other side, but like, I don't know, man. Like for me, like I guess I'm just a sellout. Like I'm like, dude, if you pay me six figures, I'll paint the <laughs> right? same shit all day for like five years, and then I'll go leave. But don't leave when you just got there. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, I guess everyone has their own reasons. They have their own kind of like convictions to do things and. You know, I definitely, I definitely can't hate on that. And I, and I think, if anything, it's just the timing of it all. Um, I don't think people know what's going to happen in the next few years when it comes to this entertainment thing, because I don't think people can predict it. I no, think it's rapidly people, changing, like all the it's time. It's like the wild, wild west. Like no one knows what's going to happen with technology. Like what's yeah. going to be the next big thing? Um, you know, just the whole crowdfunding has shattered marketing. Like youtube twitter like the 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 methods that, that you used to have to do to make a game you know go through publishers so go through different. all that stuff it's obsolete now and so yeah. now it's like anyone can do something and i think because of that people are just like well well fuck it like let's let's go do something like what like the, t- I, I i would tell people that want to do something if there was ever a time to do it like now it's time to do it 
because no one knows. Like, no one knows what's going to happen in the next year. Like, we have this Oculus technology coming out. Yeah. It's just like, like, like the, the idea of console games are kind of slowly dying out. AAA studios are no longer like a thing really anymore. And it's just like, no one knows what's going to happen. And so I think um, that's why for me, I took the chance. I was just like, well, like, if, if we're going to do something, we, it, it has to be now because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. So everyone's trying to, everyone's trying to be that person trying to figure out what that thing is, what the next thing is. Yeah. It, there's just, it's rapidly evolving. So it's, yeah, it's, it's anybody's it's scary, game basically, it's scary, but it's fun. Like, yeah. it's, scary. It's, it's like, this is awesome. Like, this is really cool. So this is awesome. Um, how often can, do you think, or do you try to get away with repeating, uh, hand drawn textures that you made for this project? Um, I try to get away with it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it's kind of funny because John is very like, just repeat stuff, repeat it, repeat it. And I'm like, okay, I, I will. And, then, and I really never do. Like yeah. almost everything you see, um, probably like maybe these things, everything else is like with probably the roofs and the ground, like roof, ground. I think the ground is probably the most repeated thing you'll ever see. Yeah. Uh, almost everything is, um, is like not repeated. Like, like all this, like maybe this stuff, I guess is technically like, you can move the stuff around. Oh, cool. um, almost everything is uh, turn the lights off. Almost everything is like painted. You know, you can get in there. You can see all the detail that I get in there. Like everything is wow. literally like painted for a certain a certain like thing. So I try to like make I try to make really like like awesome like assets because again we we want the game to um we want to make a three part game eventually. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, well, even even if we don't use it. I'm just going to paint it anyway because <laughs> we can use it later in the game. So, like, almost everything, this is, like, an old thing, um, like a test. Mm -hmm. um, like, all of this is, oh, not, wow. is not modular at all. It's all hand-painted. So you can see, like, how much detail um, I put into it. Yeah, definitely. So, like, it looks amazing. Yeah, so, um, you know, all, like, all this kind of stuff, yeah, repeated for sure. It also is repeated. But, like... Anything that I cannot repeat, like I will not repeat it. Like I'll, I will pin it out. And I think it kind of, it kind of drives John a little bit mad sometimes because he's <laughs> like, you could just repeat it and then we'd be done. And I'm like, or he'll be so happy when it's all together. Like everything is fucking like awesome. So it's really cool that like, um, I, I really want to, I really want it to be like, um, we, we've actually been meaning to do some stuff where we like invite people in, mm -hmm. um, our, our subscribers that, that, that have paid for the game to, uh, kickstarter and like have them come in and just give suggestions of what to paint and be like hey man it's your game tell me what, what, what you want me to paint and i'll paint it right now for you and put it in the game <laughs> and i'll be like hey man well, well, i'm gonna make like a, a bar tavern sign like what should i call it you know and, awesome. and that, that's that's so cool to me that i'm like i could name it tyler i'm, I'm gonna name this guy tyler it's npc tyler you're gonna be in the game yeah like, get me in there thing, like like you know kaylin chalk we call it the chalk bar <laughs> and like no one and no one can tell me no right except for like john but like we have that freedom and that to me is like so cool um definitely to have that you know so I, like everything you see i don't really repeat that much um <clears throat> i mean we, we do have modular pieces for sure but like any kind of new scene or new area um i definitely try to paint it like myself because it's just yeah. like it's just why not like i i think that modularity stuff it is fun in like in regular games, but I'm like, if we make our own game, I will just. I know. I will just. You might as well just have fun with it. You the funding's like, like right. If the funding's already pretty much tapped out, you know, just go with it and make the the best that you, you know, product yeah, that you can at this point. It's not point. like I'm making any. It's not like I'm being paid at this point. Like I'm not making any money out of it. So like I'm already not being paid. So it's like, fuck it. Like I don't care. Like if I'm gonna do it, like I might as well have fun with it. So. Yeah. Um, you know, but we, we definitely try to be within reason, obviously, if, if, if there is like a, a tight deadline, obviously I'll do what I have to do to get it done. But for the most part, um, it hasn't come to that yet, but luckily I, I think we have enough assets because I've, I mean, I, I, I could probably show you all that we have, but we have like thousands of assets, man. It's kind of scary. Um, how much I've painted in the past like year and I haven't really been working on it full time. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, I, I really wish I had the time, like full time hours right. to do this, um, Otherwise, like it would be, I only worked on it full time for a good like six months, and then after that, I've just been going. It's it really, it really, it was a really weird situation because he was like, "Well, I can't pay you after this, so like, 
you know, I, I really want you to get all this work done now so that way I can pay you. And I was just like, well, don't worry about it, dude. Like, I'm already invested in this game. So, mm-hmm. like, at this point, it doesn't doesn't serve me, it doesn't do me any good to, like, to do the work and then not work out after, like, after you after you don't have any money for me anymore. Like, right? Because I'm like, yeah. that, that, means, that means the game's going to suck. I wasted my time, right? Like, I want the game to do well. So, I'm like, don't worry about the money, dude. Like, you can pay me. Like we make money, so at that point, like it kind of it kind of turned into this kind of like opposite, right? Of Kickstarter, where I'm like, all right, well, you can pay me when the game does well, because but but only because like I felt like I I own the game myself, you know, like I took ownership mm-hmm. over it, and I think when that happens, that's when there's something really cool, you know, going on. So, um, but you know, me and John have come to an agreement about like what we'll get paid and stuff like that. Not that I don't even really care, but. It's just like it's just fun to me, and and I haven't had this fun this much fun in a while, and so it's been like a really, a really cool thing. Whenever yeah, I, and I can I think it shows in the work that you're actually really enjoying this. Yeah, you know I really want that that RPG like Chrono Trigger, like Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Like I love those games as a kid, and I would love to make something like that for people um to enjoy what will this really hoping that it does well what will this be released on if you don't i want to promote this the Um, the best i uh, can we're we're gonna be on steam Mm -hmm. um so that's that that's our biggest one uh is steam because we we went through the green light project i'm not sure if you're familiar with that yeah i've heard of that yeah so we got we got through the green light project so you know shout outs to all the steam people that got us green lit um thank you very much um so we got on the green light the green light project so that means that pretty much like we're down, like we're okay to be on their platform. Because obviously to be on Steam, they only accept like like really good quality games. So mm-hmm. it's like so they're pretty much like, okay, they want the, 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 the community wants you, make the game, finish it, we'll look over it, and then you can be on our platform. So Steam is like a really big platform to make a lot of money just because you know everyone buys games on steam right yeah. i'm sure you have a steam account and like new games come out and you're like ah oh, screw you take my money then you buy too much on the sales and <laughs> yeah the sales you're just like ah oh, fuck you never get <laughs> around to it what's that guy's name like newell whatever like something yeah game i'm like ah oh, fuck you game like, <laughs> like, I, I, I was gonna like buy food and now i can't buy food because i'm buying like a bunch of games for your your thing so um we're focusing on that first off but um there's actually been a, a big a big demand for it on Vita. Oh, like, I would play so, the heck out of this on Vita. Yeah, so actually Sony, um, I, I believe, has contacted us and they're like, "Dude, we want this on Vita, like when you when you finish." So we're 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 trying to aim for that, and I would be really excited for it on Vita. And then, um, so we're trying to get, we're trying to get it on PC and Vita. I think there's been some talks about the Wii U um possibly or like mm-hmm. the Wii or something like that but right now our, our biggest our biggest market for the game is steam because it's pc yeah but we, we, would, we would love to get it in the hands of handheld people um that would be the plan but we just gotta we gotta work out one thing at a time because against only two people yeah but we'll we'll see what happens like towards the end of it but, you know we never know you might want to take on an investor or something like that but we've been very adamant about not about not getting publishers involved mm-hmm because we want to, we want to keep the kind of like the royalty and the rights and the creative stuff to ourselves, and so we've been trying to like just make sure that we can do everything by ourselves. But um, Steam, Steam, and um, and PS4 are the big things. I, I think Sony is like really they really wanted to finish the game, so we're like, oh shit, like. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> because I, I think Vita's kind of missing on some titles right now. They yeah. <laughs> and, and I guess like they want to, they want to fill that RPG gap kind of thing and so we, we, we definitely want to be like the next kind of like bravely default you know that yeah. gets those kind of numbers and sales but I, I think i think if we could pull it off I, I think if anything people will just be like dude two guys made this like this is nuts so um i'm hoping that people will, will see like how much work we put into it yeah i think and you'll blow people's minds some, <laughs> like once yeah, if, if they props. realize that yeah it's, it's it's been it's been really crazy thus far um like my wrist hurts. <laughs> like when I paint nowadays, I'm just painting again. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I, I feel like I haven't painted for a long time. Now I just like photo bash and whatever. But like for now, I'm like actually painting, painting. That like my wrist hurts like daily, so I have to like you know rest my wrist and do stuff. So I'm like, dude, I'm like painting again, like actual painting. So, yeah, it's so um, much different. It's it's been it's been really cool. Like so so yeah so so um steam steam is the biggest one, and we're we're hoping that we do enough numbers. That we can make the second and third one because the the story that he's written out is a is a, is a three part series. Awesome. 
Have you ever played um, the game? It was on the original PlayStation, like uh, Sakoden One and Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this really reminds me of that. And it's like, yeah, it awesome. definitely has that that feel to it, and it has a it has a, a little bit mixture of different elements um, from kind of his own kind of creation. But mm -hmm. it's definitely very um, tactical. Um, it's, it's it's definitely very much like chess. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's probably the best way that I can des describe the game, just because like you know what the opponent has, they know what you have. And it's definitely like a like an even like an even playing field. Like there there are no unknown unknowns yep. in the game. So you definitely have to like art, outsmart your opponent when you play. And when you do it, you definitely feel like a badass when you like when you like place your your characters in a way that you know that you know topples your opponent. Yeah. So um, we're 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 hoping for the for that. Uh, we we've, we've always wanted to try to fill that gap for that R R um, RPG enthusiast that wants those kind of games, but they don't get them anymore. Yeah. You know, like like the latest kind of like Final Fantasies are, are, are cool and everything, but it doesn't kind of have that same feel. They're not the Final Fantasies we grew up with. <laughs> yeah, like the ones we, like, yeah, like I haven't had that Chrono Trigger, you know, tactics feel in a very long time. And I think people have been, been demanding it. Yeah. And we've definitely been going after a very niche market. Like we're definitely not making this game for like the, we're not it's not mass marketing where we're trying to be like call of duty or we're trying yeah. to be like you know, be market to everyone to get everyone's money we definitely want to market it towards um that that hardcore that you know hardcore rpg gamer that loves a good story and loves a good design and they're not they're not, they're not necessarily about all the graphics and stuff and so we we really feel that if we if we kind of just uh cater ourselves to that market that will be okay in terms of sales because they'll know that we're like being real about it, you know, that we're not trying to just like money whore and just make things because we think it's going to make money, but we're making it because we want something for those, for those fans. And mm -hmm. I think that it's been like a gap missing for a long time. And I think that it's time that it gets filled. And I hope that it inspires other people to, to fill that, to fill that, that gap as well. Cause I definitely miss those kind of games. And I know you're working on a game for a long time. And I was actually following that, that one that you were working on that. that yeah. Kind of Days of Dawn. Awesome. Yeah. And I was like, sweet. This game looks sick. Like hand painted like shit. Like I'm all about that. Th that's how they sold me on that. I just did, you know, I just signed on to do some art to launch like a Kickstarter. But like, yeah, it's going to be like final fantasy tactics and all these old gold games. I was like, cool. Sign me up. I don't care if I don't ever get paid or whatever. I just want to do a few assets for you guys, and we'll see if that's enough to get the funding. But then, like, I don't know. That does, that just goes with the territory of doing Kickstarter games. Like, these guys were all in Germany or, you know, somewhere in Europe working on it, and I'm just kind of relaying them a few assets. And then, you know, they, they got funding for it, I guess. But, I, you know, I I don't know what they've been... They've been working on other stuff. I don't know. I, I'm not really associated with them so much. But, yeah, so you never know. Yeah, so, yeah, so definitely, um, you know, Job was nice enough to put things in writing and get a contract for me, <laughs> you know, in terms of, like, payment and stuff. And and John and I, like, in turn, have kind of, like, become friends, like, pretty good friends. So it's, like, I, I don't feel like I'm working for, like, a partner or whatever. I feel like I'm just working with a friend on something, and it's, and it's really, awesome. really cool. So I've been very lucky enough to have a, a very cool guy, like, to approach me, you know, and just be like, hey, I want to work with you and – and yeah, it's like we joke around and stuff like that, and and, and I don't I don't get to see him as much, but yeah, like when he's working on it, it inspires me to work on it. Anytime I see like these other game companies that are like a, like big game companies now that are working on their own like RPG games, I'm like, man, I'm like I get I get really pumped up. I'm like, man, I want to show these companies like what you can do with two people <laughs> if, if you Definitely. like if you bust your ass and and yeah, it's it's been it's been like. And I, I feel even bad, like I'm taking too much credit because most of it, honestly, is is John uh, per se because he's the one that really like puts the puts the pieces together. You know, mm -hmm. luckily I just do the art, and it's one of those things too that the reason why I feel so confident about this game is that a lot of games re rely on art to kind of to kind of be the selling point, yeah. not so much the design or like the, the the gameplay mechanics. Mm -hmm. But I think the game's gonna do really really well because his the gameplay mechanics are really solid. That, awesome. You know, when I when I played Tactics, you know, the, the graphics were okay. It's like whatever. Yeah. But it was a gameplay that got me hooked in. You know, it was like the the menus, all all like the you know choosing stuff. And I think that's what's gonna slip people in. And I think that my art of anything will just be icing on the cake. So that's yeah, why definitely. I feel like I feel very confident that our game can do some amazing things if people give it the chance. So my job is kind of lure people in with pretty art, <laughs> and then 
Baby. John's job is to like lure them in with like really good design and good story and stuff like that. So I, I really I'm awesome. Definitely very very confident that we're gonna do we're gonna be okay. Well, thank. I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for coming on the show today. It's been it's been an honor having you here talking to us all about your experience on this oh, project. No, thank you. And I will do anything I can to help promote this once it's on release and everything, as I'm totally on board with this game. This is everything I grew up with, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll definitely, definitely keep you in touch. And yeah, if you if you want to follow it, um, I guess you can go to the the Leech uh, Kickstarter page, mm -hmm. and that's probably where you can. We, we we try to update maybe like every two months, every month about what's happening. So. Um, we're we're very transparent. We don't we don't like to lie to people. I mean, obviously, there's been some some issues with Kickstarter. People like taking the money, yeah, not talking to, any, not like just going dark. Um, we're very we're very not like that. We try to um, talk to you guys at least you know twice a month, every month, and we're very transparent about what we're working on. We say this is where your money's going, kind of thing. We're working on this, 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 and this, and we're doing this, this, and this. So um, the Kickstarter page is probably the best place to check it out, and. I think if anything, we probably will open up donations. I, I believe John wants to do that um, towards the end of it if we if we need extra funding. But I, I think I think we'll be okay. Um, awesome. Um. So. Um. But yeah, luckily, um, it, it's been t it's been awesome support, and I just I really thank everyone for for uh, that's down. You know, especially a great artist like yourself. But I'm a big fan of your work. So well, well, thank you very it's much. Funny interview me for our game. I'm like, oh sweet, it was awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we do what we can. Oh. All right, yeah, I'd like to say goodbye to you now. This has been, again, truly great. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right, for this episode's question, Meryl from Facebook asks, I was wondering if you first imagine the image in your head and then you do it in Photoshop, or does it take you like a lot of sketches to have something you like? And the answer is yes, it takes me a lot of sketches to have something I like. I never just jump into an image. And um, many of you know this, has seen my previous videos, I do thumbnail after thumbnail um, and even uh, concept design sketch you know one after another until I have uh, something that I can I feel might be worth devoting a lot of time into making a more formal uh, image you know all the way to a finish and uh, even before I do thumbnails and sketches I might even go through notebooks and I mean I write ideas down all the time and before I even you know get it to a thumbnail I will uh, definitely just wait until it manifests in terms of like a solid idea you know on paper first written out it's just that my personal philosophy is uh, the more planning the better um, nothing and in, in my opinion worth truly worthwhile is done without any sort of planning you build a building you have a plan to go by you you, you plan a big vacation you generally have a plan to go by I mean everything you, you know everything you plan for and it's usually better for it um, with all my images it and it starts way before I ever open or make a Photoshop document I I will gather references I will jot down what all the components will be and I'll make sure I I research them and understand them um, and I will do you know iteration after iteration of character designs I will just you know, it starts with just one core idea, like a seed for me, and it just, I just keep adding to it as I develop things, and, you know, the, the ideas kind of, like, grow off each other, and, um, kind of, you know, organically develop in a sense, whereas I kind of start with one core idea, and throughout the entire process of the research and the planning, I'll, I'll kind of just farm more ideas in, in my, you know, a, as I go, in my studies and everything, and then, I'll just try to apply it all to uh, the you know the master image or the concept that I'll eventually get to. Now, every concept I do and image I make doesn't go through this big elaborate process that I'm talking about. I'm just kind of speaking in a, in a general sense that if uh, on my personal work, this is what I do. Generally, if I'm doing the contract work or I'm working on existing properties or you know on a team with people, there's people that already have done or do you know, their individual tasks, and it's, you know, a collaborative effort where everything kind of comes together. So I hope that answered your question, and yeah, this footage, you know, Shameless Plug Time has been through my newest Gumroad tutorial. Uh, check it out if you haven't, I'll have a link below, but yeah, thank you for watching, subscribing, and take care.